Engineer Bob Lash built this homemade computer back in the mid-1970s. He says at the time, computers were something only major universities and big corporations had. But if you wanted access to it for your own personal use, the only way to do it then was to build it yourself. <laughs> so he did just that with the Homebrew Computer Club, a hobby group that included some of Silicon Valley's future luminaries, like Apple co-founder Steve Wozniak. He showed up one evening with the very first Apple computer. It was smaller and more self-contained than most. I thought it was cool. <laughs> and the idea that you could have a, your computer on a single board and you attach a keyboard and it's pretty much ready to go was nice. That ethic of cool, simple functionality would become one of Apple's themes. The company didn't invent personal computers, MP3 players, or smartphones, says Computer History Museum curator Dag Spicer. What is invention? Do you always have to invent something new, or can you take something that exists and just rearrange it and make it beautiful? Anyone can make music now. Beautiful and easy to use were Steve Jobs' hallmarks. A big breakthrough came in 1984 with the Macintosh. It's not like a big scary computer. It doesn't even look like a computer, really. So that was a big psychological decision done on purpose, very consciously, uh, to make it as welcoming and non-threatening as possible. The Macintosh brought point-and-click computing to the masses. It was just amazing. You know, here it was, a sandbox for the mind. Bruce Damer collects the history of computing at the DigiBarn outside Silicon Valley. He says before the Macintosh, you had to speak a special language to work with the computer. So you had pretty much only text. This was a revolution because you allowed you to put pictures on the screen and make icons and windows and drag stuff around and draw. Damer says the Macintosh changed our relationship with computers. More than this thing that's a computer you have to interact with as a user. This is your friend. And Damer says that spirit of user friendliness has made it easy for us to welcome computers into our lives. That's the garage where Steve Jobs and Steve Wozniak built the first 50 Apple One computers. They get a lot of visitors and they're not real happy about it. The private house has become an unofficial tourist attraction. In a fitting, if not entirely welcome, tribute, visitors shoot video of it on their iPhones. Steve Barragona, VOA News, Silicon Valley, California.